Professor Sir Kerry Cooper is a professor of organisational psychology and health at Manchester Business School. And Sam Lewis is a 24 year old freelance journalist working from home. So uh, let's talk to uh, uh, both of those. Eve, uh, afternoon to you both. Good afternoon, Tristan. Um, I'll start with you, uh, Sir Carey, because um, uh, how important, you know, we've been talking about banter actually in the last hour and about how sometimes in the workplace, one of the ways I really love bonding with people both in and out the workplace is sort of tease them a little bit and have that sort of, you know, fun interaction like that now and then and, and, and be able to see people face to face and it's a really good way of bonding with people it's a really good way of having those sorts of jokes which you can't do that so much virtually can you and does that really damage someone's ability to bond with their workmates and 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 build those networking opportunities no no i think you're right christo i mean to be honest with you we've all been working remotely and uh, the evidence is, and you're right about the social connectedness, and that's why we go to work. I mean, we've had the technology a long time. We could all, most of us in a service-based industry, people that didn't have to be at the coalface, i.e. doctors, nurses, bus drivers, pilots, uh, paste assembly line workers, most of us could have been working from home, service by including you. You could have been working from home, in your bedroom, Broadcasting dead easy. Quite a lot of broadcasters were actually doing that. Okay, so we, we could, but pre-COVID, people wanted to work flexibly, right? And the reason by flexible, I mean, you know, if it, it fits you, it fits them. So the employer says, it, you know, wherever you want to work, you can work, but it's a good idea to come in from time to time to team build, to develop new products and services, to socialize, to schmooze, the yeah. kinds of stuff that we all do and we need, because that's why we go into the workplace. And so I think young people have been very bad. People who just started, say, leaving university or college and going to the workplace 18 months ago, I feel really sorry for them. I mean, they really have been badly affected. Going forward, this hybrid model that employers are gonna introduce, in other words, flexible working in a service-based kind of job. I mean, obviously not at the coal face type job. Um, that will be what I suspect will happen is young people, for the very reasons you mentioned, will go into the workplace substantially in the central office. And most employers, by the way, I happen to be president of the CIPD, the professional body of HR professionals. We have 160,000 members. They all have found out that's what's likely to happen. Young people will go in maybe three, four days a week. Uh, older people, people outside, people who have kids and families who want work-life balance will probably go in two or three days a week max uh, and work primarily from home. We're just going to have a mixed model. But young people who are just starting off in their career need, to, in a way, to be in an office environment to meet their social needs because they're young, they're mm. sociable. They also learn from older heads. Okay, Sam, older does, that, does that resonate with you? You're 24. You've mainly been working from home for the last 18 months, I imagine. Um, do you feel like you've missed out on stuff? Do you feel like you've not been able to to build those relationships? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I feel horrible for, for kids who are just leaving university now. I mean, my first job came as a result of uh, through an event that the university organized when you can shake hands and rub shoulders with the people. I went to the London School of Economics and, you know, they organize a lot of these events. And it's interesting that all my, you know, my friends from university that studied finance and economics, their banks or their, their law firms have forced them to come into work because they know that that's how business is done, that's how um, relationships are formed, and ultimately that networking is done so you can build your career and, and also build confidence. Because when you're talking to people over the camera the whole time, you don't have the opportunity to you know joke with them or, or even to ask them for a pint. It's all very static. There's no, you can't get a feel for the room. It's, you do need to be in a room with someone in order to uh, have that emotional intelligence and to develop it, which is so important when you're when you're younger. So what's the solution, uh, Sakari? I mean, what, what advice would you be able to to give to Sam or someone like Sam who might be listening? Well, I think what's going to happen with the Sams in the future and, and the kind of young people, I, I totally agree with Sam, by the way. I think what's going to be happening is what what's going to happen in the workplaces is HR departments are going to say to people, Given the nature of the role you play, you can work flexibly. That is flexi place, flexi time. What suits you? 
Now, young people like Sam are going to say, Sam's no longer young. He's 24. Hmm. So let's say you're right, <laughs> Sam. Say a 21-year-old out of university. Okay. I think what they're, what they're going to say to them is, what would you like? And a lot of the young people are going to say, I think I'd like to be in a central office to start with. Get to, so I learn from people, develop relationships, be a part of a team and the rest of it. And other people who have two kids, live 15 miles out, have an hour and a quarter commute, an hour and a half commute in, are going to say, you know what, I'm going to come in two or three days a week when I need to, sometimes maybe only one or two days a week. And that's what's going to happen. That's good HR. Flexible working, the evidence is pre-COVID. The evidence was if people worked flexibly, were more productive, more job satisfied, and had less sickness absence days. That's the evidence. It's fairly overwhelming evidence. But you have to, you can't force them to come in because that will be counterproductive and you can't force them to stay at home. I mean, are, you, are, you, the... are you annoyed, Sam? Are you annoyed at what you've missed out on? Are you a bit, a bit annoyed as well that the Chancellor, who's been sort of part of a government as well, that have put all these restrictions on people and now saying, well, actually, you know what, God, some of this might have been quite damaging. I think the worst part of it is not knowing when you're going to get back to a proper form of normality. Look, when, mm. when this started, when the first lockdown happened last year, I remember people saying, oh, it'll be three weeks or four weeks. Then you get to summer and then you go back into work, but you know, not, it's not really, you're going flexibly and, and nobody's really around. Then we're back into lockdown again and, and you know, the vaccine comes along and you think, okay, early next year we'll be fine get to February, March, April, May, we're here now, we're, we should all be back at work, I think. And yet, you know, people are still working from home. And who knows what's around the corner if, if the vaccines aren't as um, effective as we hope. You know, the fears of a lockdown coming in, in November, December again, it's a worry and it's just so unfortunate. And it's, it's hard to take from time to time because you have such hope that things will get back to some form of normality, but you don't know how many, how long it will go on for. And it's not having that end date that I think grates on young people's minds because they can't plan for the future. All right. Well, listen, really good to talk to you both. And uh, I, I think that, that you have my sympathies because like I